I've created almost 25,000 images with Meet Shiny, so I know the tool pretty well. Today, I want to talk about the Meet Shiny editor. It has been around for a while, but now you can also work with layers. That's very useful. I tested the editor from a beginner's view and tried many different things. I'll show you step by step how it works. If you want to further customize images in Midjourney, then you've come to the right place because the editor in Midjourney is exactly the right solution for this. There are actually two of them. One can be found on the left in the navigation. This is the so-called external image editor. If I click on it, I am redirected to the edit your images page. Assuming you haven't worked with it yet, you will initially only see this edit new image section. If you click on it, you now have the option of either using images from a URL or uploading images from an external source. If we want to use the URL, simply right click on an image of your choice and then click on copy image URL under share and save. Then simply return to the edit from URL input mask and then paste the link you just copied there. Midjourney will then use exactly this image here. The second way to activate the external image editor is, as already mentioned, this brown button. This allows you to select an image from your hard disk. But there is actually a third way to edit images. Simply click on an image of your choice and you will see the inconspicuous edit button at the bottom right. Now it may be that this is not visible for you. This is probably because you have not yet activated its visibility via more options and more actions. If I uncheck the box, you can see what happens. This means simply click on more options and place a red check mark next to more actions. Then simply click on edit. Now we are in the internal image editor. Confusing, a little. This internal editor is used, as the name suggests, to modify images created purely via Midjourney. We also find the normal standard functions in the top right hand corner. More on this in a moment. What is different here, however, is the vary function and the editor actions field. There we find the open and edit tab button. In short, clicking on it triggers the same action as clicking on edit in the navigation on the left. But now let's work with the more versatile tool, the external image editor. To do this, click on edit in the navigation on the left. Then click on edit new image. And now I select the brown edit uploaded image field to edit an image. I've already prepared something for this, this blurred background image. The two tabs edit and retexture are crucial here. Both functions are fundamentally different. With edit, you can edit images just like in a graphics program. With retexture, you can change the style and color of images, i.e. their entire substance. Step one is the edit function. The tools that we see directly below become relevant when we have already executed a task. More on this in a moment. The first tool is called Move and Resize. If you activate this function, the image will have a white handle in each corner. If I move one of these white fields while holding down the mouse button, I can reduce or enlarge the image. The other alternative is this slider on the left. You can use it to change images by percentage. A pro tip at this point, don't reduce the image too much because the smaller the image is, the wilder Midjourney's interpretations become. Stay roughly in the same range as what you see here. You can simply grab the image and move it to a position of your choice within the canvas. You can also change the aspect ratio here. I reset the entire arrangement for now. For example, you can change the canvas size to 3x4, 2x3, 16x9 or 9x16. And of course, you can use the slider again to adjust the image scale. By the way, more than 100% is not possible. In this tutorial, we will initially stick to the standard format of 16 by nine. Incidentally, you can see that the tools below edit have now been activated. These are undo or redo or reset. I can use undo to go back step by step to the activities I've carried out so far. Redo is self-explanatory. With reset, I return to the original state of the image. If we next look at the Paint tool, we find two editing options, Erase and Restore. Below this, I can define the brush size. If you look at the image, you will see this slightly transparent circle. 
This is the size of your brush. I can not only reduce or enlarge it with the mouse wheel, but also with the slider on the left. Another pro tip, always make the brush slightly larger so that you give mid-journey the freedom to interpret the image better. If I now mark an area with erase, for example these flags here, and then click on restore, you will see a shadow of the original image in the background. You now have the option of refining your selection. To do this, simply reduce the brush size slightly and remove what you have already selected. If I now click on Submit Edit, Midjourney is instructed to only make changes in the area you have selected. Let me first reset the entire setup via Reset. I'll show you the Smart Select function in a moment. First, let's jump to the Layers topic. You'll find this at the bottom left. As the term suggests, you can place different layers on top of each other, just like in Photoshop, for example. I have tested this extensively and found that it actually works very well with one to two layers. If there are several layers, Midjourney still has a bit of a problem. So what exactly can you do here? Simply click on the word add and upload an external image. I select an image from my external hard disk and add it to my composition as a second layer, so to speak. This image of a single penguin is now in front of my background image and is marked red as active at the bottom left. You can select the individual layers at any time and delete them again. The one marked in red is currently being edited. By using this image of the penguin, I can now explain the Smart Select tool very well. Here we find the Include and Exclude functions. If I select Include and click on the penguin with the left mouse button, Midjourney recognizes the figure and marks it with this green hatching. Exclude removes selected areas again. That was step one. Now you can use Erase Selection to delete the active selection from the image. In other words, cut a hole in the image or use Erase Background to remove the area that is now not highlighted in green. This is exactly the inverse effect. However, we want the figure to remain and only the background to be removed. That's why I click on Erase Background here. Incidentally, if you have made a mistake, you can use the undo and redo functions at any time and go back step by step. The penguin is still layer one. The background is layer two. On the far right, we see the basic element, the original image. If we now combine the individual tools with each other, for example, move and resize, then I can move the penguin to a different position in the image. Now the actual modification process begins. To do this, I go to layer two the background image, and select the Erase function. What I'm about to show you is crucial. You have to give Midjourney the option of blending the two layers into each other. To do this, I take the brush and erase image content at the transition between the two objects. In this specific case, I want the transition between the penguin and the background to be nicely interpolated by Midjourney. If I've inadvertently performed a wrong action, I can either click Undo or use Restore. Then I can remove what I have marked incorrectly. Next, I add the prompt, a penguin looks amazed, to the top of the command bar and then click on Submit Edit. Midjourney now leaves the basic structure with the individual layers. If I click on the basic element on the top right again, I can change my entire job again, even though Midjourney is already working on the new job. This means that whatever is outlined in red at the top right, is shown here as an enlarged image. I now select one of these four pictures. It is outlined in red at the top right and displayed here in large. Midjourney has now perfectly modeled the penguin into the background without you having to do any major editing. By the way, if you have to stop working on a current project, you don't need to worry that everything is gone. Midjourney saves the log. Simply restart the application, go to edit, and you will find your last edited file there, under Recent. It's as simple as that. Then just click on it again, and all the elements are there again, so nothing has disappeared. Of course, I can still go backwards and forwards. Everything you have done, and all the images, are still there. Now let's continue to change this picture here. To do this, I'll choose an image from the four suggestions that I like best. I'll take this one. By the way, you can see that this picture is new and has no further layers. Please don't confuse the two. Next, I select Move and Resize again and place the image in the middle at a reduced size. 
again, remember not to reduce the image too much. Mid-journey remains very unconventional and could simply insert something unwanted into the image if it has too much leeway. I press Submit Edit again with the same prompt. Of course, I could have written a different request. With my prompt, Midjourney now expands the image on all sides and performs a zoom effect, to put it bluntly. If we click again on the basic element, this was our source image. That's where I basically assembled the entire scene. Then I took this picture, and in the latest version, I have a somewhat wide angle shot. Of course, it's clear that not all pictures are perfect. That's why Midjourney gives you four alternatives to choose from. This picture already looks quite good, and so you can gradually refine your image. In this picture, the penguin is standing on a small hill. I actually like that very much. And now comes the part that makes Midjourney quite extraordinary. But before we go any deeper, here's another pro tip. When you've found a picture you like, always remember to mark it so that it is displayed large and then save it via upscale to gallery. If you don't do this, your image will not be transferred to your normal Midjourney gallery. You could also download images directly from the editor, but I always go the way via upscale. But now back to the very special part. This is a really powerful feature if you know how to use it. You can add incredible depth to your image. How does it work? Select one of your images in the editor, reduce its size, place it in the middle, and now comes the big moment of personalization. In the top right hand corner of the editor, there is this P symbol which stands for personalization. Click on it and switch on the function. This basically activates it, yet without further specifications. Now select a mood board that you particularly like. I use Faces Colorful. You could also combine several styles with each other, but this will eventually become a huge mishmash with no clear identification. You can see that personalization is active by the red P symbol. Now Midjourney knows I have to transfer the selected style to the new image. Now I click on Submit Edit again. For this example, I have slightly modified the prompt. The changes relate exclusively to the gray area marked here in the image. Now we can see the result. Midjourney leaves the original style in the center and generates a new theme that matches the style of the mood board you have selected. Midjourney also ensures that the two images are blended into one another. This allows you to create completely new scenes. Of course, I can resize the output and write a different prompt. For example, trees and orcs. Erase the current profile and then select a new style from your mood boards. For example, cool guy. And now, in the next step, Midjourney adds the new style of the second mood board into the scene. Here is one last test, again with a different prompt. I simply write another prompt and select the Flower Details mood board. Unfortunately, you can't see which style is hidden behind which mood board's name. You either have to memorize the styles, which is most likely not possible in most cases, or it's a bit of guesswork. And again, the image has changed. Don't forget to deactivate personalization again if you no longer want to use it. If I want to see what I've already edited in the editor, I click on View All in the top left-hand corner. This takes me to the already familiar Edit Your Images page. Here I can select all the images I've created by holding down the left mouse button and then hide them using More and Hide. If you want to delete your job completely in the editor, simply click on the small dustbin icon on the right of the image. Now you can restart from the beginning. The images which I transferred via Upscale to Gallery can now be found in the Overview section. Let's now have a look at the retexture function in step two. To do this, click on the retexture tab on the right. We will ignore the rest for this test. At this point, it is important to think creatively. For example, enter knitted penguin and then click on submit retexture. This will produce the following results. Pay attention to the flags and the figures in the background. Here we see the free interpretation of mid journey which visualized a knitted depiction from your 3D rendering. This produces results like this or something similar. Again, remember to transfer the image you like to your create profile via upscale to gallery. Of course, you can also refine this further. To do this, click on edit again, then 
open in Edit tab and load an external image. Interestingly, cropped images, such as PNG files, work very well. Then you no longer need to use the Smart Select function. You can see the cropped penguin here. Place it in the position of your choice and start modeling. This is now the older brother of the knitted penguin. Remember to erase the area between the two layers in the background image so that Mid Journey can blend the two layers seamlessly. Again, it worked perfectly without you having to use any other software. Both penguins now have their very own look and feel in the same lighting. The job is done, it's that simple. Don't overload the editor with too many layers. Mid Journey may become a little overwhelmed. I have been working with Photoshop for about 25 years. Mid Journey still has a long way to go if it wants to compete with Photoshop. For example, you can't mirror images at all, and many other basic functions don't work. Think more in terms of how you can combine two images together. Then the success rate is much higher. That's it for this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. Please leave a like, subscribe to the channel and recommend it to others. Thank you very much for listening. See you soon. Your channel, AI. Now you know.